Hey guys, I don't remember if I ever showed you one of these units. These are made by Frederick VRPs. So instead of P tax or whatever they call them, these are variable speed hotel units. And uh, so it's in a closet here. Has the uh, rotary compressor down there, condenser fan, pushing air out, and then it just draws it in. Got it. Draws the air in, pushes it out. Here is your uh, inverter board, which is it. Pretty sure it's just in these heat sinks. I pulled them out before. They're just air to air with hot air from outside cooling it. This is a 208 volt in. And I looked on here and saw that these are my test points for DC. So I can do this one hand without juicing myself or something. Look at that. It must be full wave. Electrification 434 volts DC because the AC is 208, it's not even 230, 207.1. See, isn't that interesting? At home, I got 230 volts AC going in to the VFD and it rectifies out at 325. So that must be uh, half wave rectification, and this must be full wave. I've noticed, I mean, I've worked on Mitsubishi's and other stuff. They usually have the full wave rectifiers on there. What do I have for amps? 6.3. Yep, so fully variable speed. Thermostat connections right here on these. They have power, like 12 volts DC, and then two terminals for communication, and it communicates two waves to the thermostat. Right here. And they'll give fault, you know, if they don't work. So, totally communicates through there. And it's got this board. Look, they have SD card there. There's usually one in here. Oh, that's weird. It doesn't have one. I usually see one in there. I know when they have one in there, if it faults, they could store the faults and you can pull that out and send a file to the tech, the field tech or whatever for this brand. You put it in your computer and you pull out this file and you email it to them. <laughs> it has all the like the log, like the temperature readings and everything. So pretty much three phase rotary. Probably a high RPM one. You know, usually they go way over 60 hertz. Maybe 120 or even 240, depending on the model. I haven't paid too much attention on these Fredericks yet. They just started installing these, but they're installing quite a few of them. So our company's been installing a couple hundred of these within the last year or so. We're getting a crash course on these suckers. LEDs everywhere, look at this. Relay board over there. Yeah. Electronic relay. Uh, this, this is just one with all the sensors. Thermostat connections that can go to it. And it just connects over to the inverter board. And then when you pull these off, they got the heat sink paste and everything. I think when they give us the new ones, I think they have the heat sink on them already. I'm trying to remember. I don't know. It's pretty much like doing an LG or something. It's real similar. You just have all the screws you take out. So. Very interesting. Filter's already getting dirty. Fun, fun. Okay, I have a Fredericks unit in another room. It keeps tripping. I had my amp meter on there. So the blower pulls less than one amp. So, you know, it said on the uh, sticker, which this one's been paint over, but I know when another one I was looking, it says like 4.2 amps or 4.7, depending on the voltage for the compressor. I had a total of, I think I was like getting close to seven amps. So that means the compressor was running like six, six point something when it tripped, so it was like an amp and it, over, over an amp over its rating. All right, there goes the condenser fan. Now, at first, you was kind of, I was, bothered about running this unit without this cover but basically the fan here looks like a radiator fan it pushes the air through the outdoor coil pushing it outside and the intake is up above it that always is weird seeing the hot air blow out underneath the cool air drawn in that's I don't know it's a weird engineering but that's what Fredericks did but since uh, the, it, the fan is right up against the coil pushing it through instead of pulling it this way it's just uh, pulling room air out so it shouldn't affect it, plus it's, you know, 
it's open above, so it's still gonna do most of the outside air. It might just pull a little bit of air from the room. It doesn't make a difference. Okay, there's the compressor. The compressor goes up to like 120 hertz or so, so it's up to four, it's already at max. I do have my pressure ports hooked up now. 380. Oh, this pressure's gonna look too bad for as much amperage as this thing's going. 4.7, that means probably about 3.7 compressor. Pressure's up to four. Let's do this again with 410 so the readings mean something. Okay. Up to 400 again. Powered off the battery's going low. 6.3, which means 5.3. Or. So that's about 5.5 amps for the compressor, actually. About 440, but that only equals 123 degrees on R410. So that'd be pretty normal on 105, 110 degree day. It says it's 6.7 amps, that means 5 point something. There might be something wrong with that compressor. The compressor might, and the compressor shakes a lot when it starts, so. It might be a damaged compressor, 6.8 amps, which is about, see the blower's only pulling 6 point something? They're on my low battery. So it's actually like 6 amps. Compressor's pulling 6 amps, and this thing tripped. So it's a, I think it's got a bad compressor. Yeah. A lot of times this guy, Frederick Trump, when he sends us a compressor, they'll send us a circuit board with it. I don't know why, they just think when these things get over amped, they're done, but I don't think anything's wrong with it. Wow, I'm on another Frederick's, ooh, 16 amps. Total cooling amps, 11.1, and for a 2008 volts. Right now, 16.5, that's only what's going into the inverter board. So it's five amps over right now. Six amps, all oh, freaking low battery, you cocks. It's pissing me off. 17 amps, yeah, the breaker's tripping on this thing. Dude, that's crazy. 17.3, I need to get my computer out. All right, I'm gonna hook the pressure gauge up to this one. I think I see the problem on this one, recording. Uh, there's out, remember there's daylight up there where it draws air in? It's closed, there's a piece of solid metal right there. <laughs> Who's that? We'll pull the cover on the one across the I way. I guarantee you it's the same thing. It's the opposite side, that'd be funny if they did that. Yeah. Actually, I'm not gonna hook up my pressure gauges because I already saw what is going on with this one. Pulled off the cover. There's the compressor. This is a bigger one than that other one that's working on there. there. There's that fan. Look how big that is. It's like a car radiator fan. But the inlet up there is closed off. Yeah. Also to show you guys, um, remember I said the heat sinks on the back side? That it's this this kind is just uh, air cooled. And look, you just see the fins are in there. That is the fins for the, uh, basically a variable frequency drive is all that is. So My amps were going up to over 15 earlier. I have this cover off so it's going to draw air from the space for condenser air now. And I have the feeling the amps won't go up. The breaker is a 15 amp breaker. This thing only runs 11 amps. But let's get up there. The room is hot. Still might not have enough air. Remember, air out, air needs to come in for air to go out, and I doubt there's a window that opens on air. Negative, no porch. For it to blow air out through that coil, it's gotta, air's gotta come into the space. Oh, it is dropping, look at that. <laughs> I got that door propped open over there. My amps are dropping. Still way up there over amps. But the space is uh, 91. 90 now. I feel the cool air. Oh yeah. The amps are perfect. Amps are still dropping. 14. Dropping down. Might actually stay on line now. And the breaker they said for this is only 15. Same 15. So they got. Now we're down to 13.8 amps. So 
it might hang in there now. Man, this is that compressor sick. Now this is the kind of compressor that I wanted to like put in my unit, run off a BFD. To, uh, these things run like 15 hertz to like 120 hertz rotary. This is a two-ton one right there. Might be bigger, so it looks pretty big. But I think so. This is 24K, so I think it's a two ton unit. Man. So. And. I'm just gonna say it's low to turn the light on. Good. Back at this fun place, up above a T grid. Of course, I don't have my face mask on because I'm not gonna sweat my ass off up here with a wet diaper over my mouth. Checking out the branch box. This is a completely variable speed unit. Here's a pancake coil. It is a 54,000 BTU. So it's like almost a five ton unit. You can see how long it is. It goes way over there. They're skinny. They're not very tall, but they're long. And uh, they're basically like a LG or Mitsubishi, but it's Daikin's attempt. And here's their branch box right there. And all the ports and refrigerant lines over there, you can never get to them in. I'm having to lean back, and this is the best position I could get this ladder. Nice machine, everything's in the way. I really need to be like over there in that T grid, but I can't. So anyway, so reaching over there, so I got an issue. I have my 15 volts DC coming down from the unit on the roof, so for some reason it's not communicating. So we got some issues. They may have a bad board maybe in here. So I'm gonna reset everything and try it again. And like they said, they already had out banded some wires, pull some new ones. So I took off circuit B. They had to remove a unit because it couldn't be in the pool room, mechanical room, because of chemicals. So we, they emitted that unit, had to freaking pump out all the refrigerant. So each one of these could do like four ports. So I flipped this one off. That means you're disabling the port. So using this port and then using these two. So second one B is disabled then you get over to the next set using the first two which is gonna be E and F I believe A B C D yep yep and then uh, the next two are disabled and I think that other switch over there just means that's a slave or extender to that one there's a panel here that kind of tells you what everything does so yeah that's what I'm doing right now and of course the disconnect I'm like where is the disconnect I have to follow the Wire right. The two. Do you think the disconnect should be in line? Of, like this one. These are here. This one goes to this unit. But this disconnect is the, the this MC cable goes all the way over there, and hidden behind between some duct and the wall is a, a toggle switch for it installed from Sparky. So I have to go over there with the ladder and open another T grid just to turn the power off. It really sucks.